the Bank of Canada announced today it was raising the overnight lending rate to 1.25%, a quarter of a percent raise. Bank of Canada Governor Stephen Poller spoke with Amanda Lang of Bloomberg's Canada partner BNN to discuss. We began talking about NAFTA a whole year ago. Um, and at first, uh, you know, just began to scope out the channels that it might affect the economy. But as we got into the fall, uh, it became more evident that we needed to take seriously that it could uh, even break down. And then that uh, registered with the people we're talking to in the field our, for our boss survey. And uh, then we did, redid our boss survey in December, uh, which just published uh, a week or so ago, and uh, was very strong. Uh, concern out there. So, in effect, we're trying to gauge as the level of concern in companies. We're trying to calibrate that to how much of a judgment we insert into our outlook. Because they're telling us explicitly that they're putting off an investment or reconsidering whether it should be in Canada or not. So, we've got to acknowledge that as, an, as a negative potential in our outlook. Do you have or are you developing a plan? to respond if indeed talks you know, suddenly fall apart, the, t the deal's off? So, uh, well, uh, Ms. Wilkins was pretty clear about that in the opening statement. It is that all things considered, we don't think we can pre-calculate how uh, a change in NAFTA, whether it's a simple abrogation, what does it go to? Does it go to WTO tariffs? That's the kind of analysis one could do. But it doesn't have a lot of value from a monetary policy standpoint. Uh, we suspect it would be a net negative for the economy, of course. Uh, but how large is, I think, really not possible to say. So uh, I liken it to the oil price shock, where you know the oil price shock, you knew exactly how much oil prices had fallen. You could talk to 25 companies and get a really good fix on how they were going to respond. This just wouldn't be like that. And so for us, it's more a case of have, understanding the channels so that you can monitor how things are evolving in those channels. And as things fall below your outlook, then you'll have a reading, right? And so what happens then is you can say in real time, you know, when policy needs to respond this way or that way, or to offset this risk, we needed to look harder at that risk. So risk management problem, not something you can do in advance. Would we be better off if <clears throat> this moved quickly? if we had some to end the uncertainty, in other words, one way or another? Well, it's provided the, it had the same result. I mean, if, if, uh, if it taking more time means a better odds of a better result, that's, I can't really judge that. But it's no question that the uncertainty itself is already playing a role. And some of these decisions, like if you decide, well, I've got to expand today because my my customers are clamoring and I'm I'm slow to deliver. So a lot of companies are over their capacity. Well, I've got to expand today and I'm going to invest in the United States to be on the safe side, let's say. Well, that's not a decision you take every year. It's something maybe five or a 10 year decision. And so in that sense, there's a very hysteretic or permanent feel to those kinds of effects. Um, and so, yeah, and in, in basically it would be nice if we knew now. Uh, but again, I don't know about the dynamics of the process. Maybe we, uh, we get a better deal if it takes more time and it's more carefully done. What we do know now <clears throat> is that the economy has been doing well. Yes. Today's rate hike, obviously based on data we already have, yes. things we already know. Right. But you're making also very rosy uh, outlook and assumptions about the Canadian economy, the U.S. economy. When we add all of that up, just p explain why we're not more certain of future rate hikes today, given how close to capacity we are. So we are, we are operating uh, ab about at our potential. And, um, and of course, inflation is about at target. And so arguably, if you just took that as a snapshot, you know, interest rates should be higher. And any model would say that. But what I think we need to bear in mind is that the experience that we've been through has actually depressed potential output. You know, the investment gets put on the back burner until the economy gets really going. Uh, investment has been a lagging uh, feature with this outlook. Uh, for quite some time. Only this past, say, three or four quarters have we seen good, healthy signs of investment. That's late. So what that means then is our estimates of potential have been influenced by the 
slow growth period. And in every expansion, we get to the stage of the cycle and firms say, now it's time to invest. So capacity begins to go up faster than what we have in our models. It happens every time, and we think this time it could be a bigger effect than usual because it's been such a long, slow cycle. And so we have to at least entertain that possibility because to the extent that it occurs, that's a higher level of GDP forever. But if you're worried about inflation risk and so on, first of all, you have a tendency to nip that process in the bud. And we're being very careful not to do that.